Hi, good morning. Welcome back to Mike Makes It. Today we're having a look at the Bosch Professional GHO 2682 planer. Now that's to replace my failed Bosch again PHO 100. Now this has done really, really well. I've had it gobby 30 years and all I've done is change one drive belt in it and in the last week a set of blades. They go on a drum here and there's two blades on there. And I fitted that, went to shave some oak down and I managed to shatter them straight away. Uh, probably how I fitted them, not necessarily the blades. So, uh, but rather than buy another set of blades and given the fact that's three decades old, I've upgraded to a new one. So we'll get that on the bench, see what was in the box and shave a little bit off this door. Well, this is what comes in the box. Get a book of words, multiple languages, bit ruffled up, but hey, you're only going to read it once, I expect. Nice few diagrams in there so they know what, what it's talking about as you look further in. There's only a couple of pages, to be honest, of English instructions, but they, they do give you a few pointers. Dust bag, very handy, keep the dust at bay. There's an adapter to go onto the plane. Uh, for vacuum cleaner, for dust extraction, if you're not going to use this. You probably fetch more dust out of here with a vacuum system than you would a bag, but uh, if you're only doing a little bit, probably the bag's more convenient. And there's a rebate kit. I've never ever used one of these on a plane, never had the need to, so um, there is one included. If you need it, use it. Instructions, all in here, how to actually operate it. One thing I noticed on the plane, which is different to the old one. Still got a drum, quite a heavy drum. Only got one blade on it. Just about see that there. You turn it around, nothing else going on there. There's a few grooves, but that's probably just for chip extraction. But there is only one blade. So from Mike's point of view, there's only one blade to break if I go change it next. Like uh, with the other one, I managed to shatter both of them. Thankfully, on this blade, uh, to be fair, it all the same on the PHO 100. You can turn the blade round. So once you have dulled one side, a couple of screws, all instructions in the book, of course. Pop the blade out, turn it round, screw the uh, screws back up, and away you go again, straight back to work. So uh, that's very good. You got a safety trigger here. Operates from both sides, so left or right-handed people. They're thinking of me. I'm left-handed and it, it can help. So trigger won't pull unless you depress that. And away you go. Depth adjustment here, very convenient. On the last one I had, you had to undo a knob, shuffle a plate forward just to get the right depth. It was all a bit sort of vague. This feels very nice. It's got uh, detents in it as you go, it's a click, click, click. Uh, the depth of this, the maximum depth in one stroke, is 2.6 millimetres. Uh, that's quite a, quite a chunk. 2.6 mil deep, 82 mil wide, and you can rebate up to 9 millimetres. Uh, 18,000 revs a minute. I'll put all the spec um, in the comments or in the description uh, so you can have a look as well. I'll try to link a manual in, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that yet. Uh, one more thing with the dust extraction, left or right. So you can fit the bag to the left or the right hand side. So depending on if you're left or right handed, I always work on this side. So, and on, uh, most of the tools I get, they pour out sawdust into me, which uh, not very good for the old nose. But with this a simple flick of a lever like that, and it'll send the dust this side, flick it back, it'll come out this way. So that's a nice little feature. This I've used all the time on the old plane. There's a groove cut in there. That's so you could chamfer an edge of a square piece of wood. Basically, you line that up on the edge of the wood, push it along, uh, and it keeps the plane in place, stop it sliding around, which is uh, very useful. And it puts a nice finish on the wood. Back here, I was wondering what this was doing. You know, was it a safety switch? Not sure, but what it is, it actually lets you put the plane on the desk, but keeps the blade up from the desk. So if you put this down and the blade was still rotating, so long as you um, allow this little red knob to sit on your bench, 
it keeps the blade up. Not sure if that's coming across terribly well. On the old plane, it would sit flat, but with that red tab on the back, it cocks it up and prevents this blade rubbing on the desk. So that's fairly handy. Uh, I'll get the door out, put it down on the floor. You can see the plane in action. So that's what we'll do now. Right, before I tip that door 90 degrees so I can plane this edge and this edge, got to need about four mil off either side. What I would have done is lay the door on its side here and catch it in the workbench. And that's fine, it's still, it was a bit sort of how you're doing. Can't do it this side now because I managed to cut the end of the workbench off a little while ago, which is a bit embarrassing. But what I have got is this. I've showed it in an earlier video. I'll link you into that. Now, that's the trend. Get the light out. There you go. Trend technology, trend tool technology, door stand. Basically, you put the bottom corner of a door in there and it holds it rock steady. Really, really good. I'll go pop the door in it. You see what I'm going on about. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. I always put a wedge of wood at the other end just to keep the door off the concrete. But uh, yeah, this holds it very, very steady, very, very firm. This ends, uh, I suppose, is a little bit more wibbly wobbly, but all we're doing is playing in the top surface. I'm not putting screws in the side here or mucking about. Just going to plane some off the top. So uh, that is really good and more than adequate. But uh, yeah, let's go on with the planing. I'm going to do a two mil pass, so obviously I'm going to move that round to two millimetres. One thing I didn't show you on here, I don't know if that's coming across on the camera. On the tab, there's an arrow pointing that way, which indicates the dust will flow to the left hand side as we look at it. Flick it over the other way, and there's a corresponding arrow pointing to the right, which means the dust is going to come out to the right vent. So just in case you forget, you ain't got to experiment, look at the arrows. Right, two mil off the door, here we go. That's a beautiful finish on that. I'm gonna come back the other way, just in case, it's something I've always done, whether I really need to, I'm gonna come back the other way with the wood, just in case the blade isn't quite aligned, in other words, if it's taken slightly more off one side of the door than the other, if I go down the same way, I'm going to compound that error. So I'm going to have it sloping out even more. So if I come back the other way, um, the error is going to be not corrected necessarily, but it's going to be better. So that's something I've always done. Whether you need to is you know, obviously up to yourselves. We do another two mil, then we can bevel the edge. Right, four mil off. Uh, we'll go Beverly Edge now. One thing I did notice when I was uh, playing, playing in there, there's the air vent for the motor. It draws in air there and your jacket. So you don't want any loose clothes generally when you're working with tools anyhow but that can block over the air vent. You just fire it up. See? So you don't want to be blocking that up when you're running, the motor's going to overheat. So uh, something to bear in mind. Now we're going to bevel, bevel again. Well, oh, I'm not bevel again. We're going to bevel the edge of the wood. I'm going to use this edge. And basically you're looking to rest that groove on the edge of the wood. And you can alter the depth of bevel depending on um, where you've set the gauge. So I'm going to leave it on two mil. I'm going to make a single pass. Then we can have a close up uh, to see how good or bad it looks. So just position your plane. I usually have a little bit of wiggle wiggle to get that uh, the the V in the sole plate onto the wood nicely. You don't want it to be sideways or you're going to be slipping. So that feels very nice. You can alter the angle here, but I'm looking for 45 degree cut. So you want to balance it out pretty square. So yeah, just slow, away we go.
Right, we're getting close, see how well it, what it looks like. Okay, let's have a little look at the bevel, see how well it came out. This is set to two mil, I didn't change the depth of cut, so we've effectively got two mil bevel there. And it's not bad at all. That's just what I was looking for. I'm gonna do the same on the other side and flip the door. Two passes of two mil to take the width of the door off, then a couple more bevels. And that's the door complete, spot of paint and all that. The lovely finish. You'd expect that, I suppose, with a good quality tool uh, and a brand new blade. But yeah, I'm very happy with the pass on that. So yeah, that's the old Bosch planer or plane. That's the professional, let's get it in shot for you. That's the professional GHO2682D. On test that Mike makes it. So I hope you found that useful. If you have, thumbs up would be great. All the uh, links, etc., will be in the description, so um, you can have a look for the manual if I can find it, and prices where I bought the plane from, which was Amazon in this case. But yeah, great. Thanks for watching.